two forces of magnitude 50 and 80 act on the Cartesian plane in the directions direction sorry as shown below okay so let me just draw this a bit better for us so we've got a we've got a force going here to the right there we go of 80 we've got a force going up here that's 50 and then this angle is 30 degrees first question says give the correct term for the following description a single vector having the same effect as two or more vectors together that is called a resultant okay what do I mean by that so let's say for example you've got vector one so that's uh, one and let's say you've got another one now or let, let me rather make it a bit better uh, let's say you've got a vector going up as one and then a vector going to the right as two so what I want you to quickly do is think about the following let's say you are this little dot that's you right now this person is pushing you upwards so some imagine someone's pushing you that way and then this person whoopsie what happened there this person is pushing you to the right so if you have someone who's pushing you upwards and also pushing you to the right in which direction are you going to move would you agree with me that you would probably move off in that direction like that something like that right so this green line over here summarizes the effect of both of these so you could almost take these two away and just be like there that's what's going to happen so we call this green line the resultant why because the resultant is a single vector having the same effect as two or more vectors added together right the next question says calculate the magnitude magnitude just means size so you don't have to give the direction you just have to give the value of the vertical component of the 50 newtons okay now many learners that I've seen in the past um, they often just think okay if it says vertical if they say vertical then I must just use sin and if it says horizontal then I must just use cos. I don't want you guys to get into that type of thinking because you're gonna get caught out sometimes. They can catch you out if you think like that because they can put this angle in weird places. For example, sometimes they'll put the angle over here. They'll put like a 30 over there. And then if you had to use your sin and cos the way I just described, you're gonna get everything backwards. So what I would you have that you guys rather do is always look at each question by itself. Like don't come up with these generalized rules okay so what we do so this 50 Newton right um, if we think about that 50 Newton would you guys agree with me that that 50 Newton you could think of it as having some part going to the left and then it also has some part going upwards right and those two parts together is what causes the 50 Newtons in that direction over there so we can actually use trigonometry to take that 50 Newton and we can actually work out the horizontal part and we can actually work out the vertical part so what we do is we draw ourselves a little triangle like this and there we have it so the 50 is the hypotenuse of the triangle the vertical part is over here so I'll call this um, the force in the y direction and the horizontal part is this one over here which I'll call the force in the x direction okay you can almost imagine that there's little arrows at the end here and now it's just trigonometry you know using sin cos tan so they want the magnitude of the vertical component so the vertical component is this one so we we have this 30 degrees and we're looking for the opposite and we already have the hypotenuse so I don't know whether you like to use Sokotoa or whether you use some other weird riddle that your teacher has explained to you. Doesn't really matter. What matters is that you know how to use it. So if you know it quite well, you'll know that this is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse. So we're going to use sin. So you're going to say sin of the angle equals to the opposite, which is called Fy, over the horizontal, which is called 50 and then if you had, well not called 50 it is 50 Kevin and if you had to go get Fy by itself you're going to end up with 50 multiplied by sin 30 because the 50 ends up going to the left over there and so what we end up with now is Fy is equal to 50 multiplied by sin 30 which is 25 newtons now technically it would be up but you don't have to say up because they just said the magnitude okay so that question is now done
The next one, the magnitude of the resultant. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, this 50 Newton has, um, well, this 50 Newton is, is, is acting with this 80 Newtons, right? They are both working together. And what those two together are going to do is they are going to cause this object over here to move. We don't know whether that object is going to move upwards and maybe a little bit to the right, or maybe it's going to go downwards and a little bit to the left. We don't know. We don't know, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to work out the total result of all of this. Now, you could technically use, um, well, they did say calculate, but if they didn't say calculate, you could use head to tail, you could use um, the calculation method, which is the one we're going to use now. So, to be able to calculate the resultant, you need to take this 50 Newton and you need to break it up into its horizontal and its vertical. Okay, that is important. Otherwise, we cannot combine it with this one. So, we already drew our triangle earlier and we already knew that this one was 25 and that one's going upwards, right? Why is it upwards, Kevin? Why not downwards? Well, guys, look at this arrow. That arrow is going more up, okay? So, it's definitely an upwards force over there and it's going to the left. Now, what we'll need to do is calculate this force in the x direction. So for that, you would actually have to use cos um, because we have the adjacent, well, that's what we're looking for, and we have the hypotenuse. Kevin, can't I just use Pythagoras, bro? Of course you could. Uh, we now can use Pythagoras because we have this length and we have this length. But if you just wanna use trigonometry, that's fine. Nah, Kevin, I think I'll just use Pythag, my dude. I've been doing that since grade nine. That's fine with me. No worries. Okay, guys, uh, maybe I'm stuck in my office too long, but yeah, I, I just solidly had a conversation with myself here. Um, maybe you guys could pray for me. That'll be great. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm actually, hmm, do I want to use Pythag? It doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm just going to go normal cos 30 um, equals to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 50. And if you had to go work out the force, you would get 50 multiplied by cos 30. And so that force is going to be, I'm not going to round off because it's not the final answer. So I'm going to leave it as 25 square root 3. And that is definitely going, uh, or it's Newton's, and it's definitely going to the left, um, right? Well, I should probably not say it's just going to the left, right? I mean, like it's going to the left you know? <laughs> um, so that one's going to the left over there. So let's quickly just fill that in, 25 square root 3. So what we can now do is we can combine these two together um, because now they are both acting in the horizontal direction. So we can work out what the, the total effect of those two would be. So Kevin, should we just add them? Not necessarily. Um, it depends because you see this one's going left and this one's going right. So you're actually going to minus them, okay? But there's a specific way we're going to do this. So let's work in the horizontal direction now. So we can just work in the, we can say here fx to show that we're working in the x direction. Um, and maybe we can tell them that we would like all the ones going to the right to be positive. You could also say to the left is positive if you want, but we're gonna, I'm going to take right as positive. So that means this one, 80, uh, minus 25 square root 3. So the total forces in the x direction will be 36.6987. I'm going to keep uh, two de um, four decimals for now, just because it's not the final answer. And that is going to the right. How do I know it's to the right? Well, I chose right as positive, and I've just gotten a positive answer. So that's all good. Now I need to look in the horizontal direction. So I'm going to do it over here and I'm gonna choose all the forces going upwards as positive. You see, we wanna go, we wanna find out what is the result in the horizontal and what is the result in the vertical, and then we can combine everything at the end. So if you look carefully, the only force acting up and down would be this 25 Newton, which is acting up. So we can say that that would be 25 Newtons um, up. So there we have it. We now have all of the totals. We've got this and we've got this. So now what we can do is, let me quickly show you guys something. So we know now that from both of these forces, the object is gonna move to the right. Kevin, how can you tell that it's gonna move to the right? What about this one? Guys, we've already taken that one into account. Remember, we've just gone and calculated 
all of the rights and the lefts, and what we found was that the right was stronger, okay? So we know that it's gonna go right, and we know that that force was that. Then is it gonna move up or down? Well, we found out that it's gonna move up. So we can draw a little arrow going up, and that's 25. Then, um, we can now use Pythagoras to find out what is the result. So we just use Pythagoras. So we can say here, F resultant, to the power of two is gonna be, or let's just go straight for Pythagoras. So it's square root, because in Pythagoras you use square root. And we can say 36.6987 squared plus 25 squared. And if we work this out, we get 44.4 newtons. Now I know on the memo they got 44.1, but the memos do allow um, there's like a range that they give on the memo, okay? And that's just because of rounding and stuff like that. So I went and looked on the memo just to check why the answers are a little bit different. And it's over here where they got 25, where we said 25 square root three, they rounded to two decimals already. So it's really okay. I promise you they're not gonna mark you wrong there. Okay, so there we go, that one's fine. And then it says the direction of the resultant force. So that's easy we just come back to this little part over here, and we actually just gonna go work out this angle, okay? Because that gives us the direction. So, we could typically, we typic you'll see that your teacher will typically use tan. Um, why is it that they use tan? Well, it's usually because um, if we use this angle, we have the opposite side, we have the opposite, and we have the adjacent. So we have opposite and adjacent, which is tan. So we could say tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is that. And then you must say, um, so sorry, if you wanna get theta, then you're gonna have to say um, tan negative one of that. So you're gonna have to say shift tan on your calculator. And so I get 34.26 degrees. Now, let me explain something really interesting. Um, and I wish teachers would make mention of this. You see on the memo here, we have two answers. You don't have to get both, you just need to get one. So some of you watching this, I know for a fact you got this as your answer. But then others of you got this one. Any one of them is correct, but let me explain how you can get different answers. You know earlier when I drew this little triangle, I said that the object is gonna go right and then the object is gonna go up. But some of you who are watching this, and it really doesn't matter, you are correct. You might have said first that the object goes up and then it goes to the right. And then when you connected it, you would be calculating this little angle. You see that? Whereas my triangle was like this and I was calculating that angle. So together, these two angles do make 90 degrees, and if you had to go add these up, they do get 90 degrees. So when I'm getting this as my answer, you might be getting this angle here, which is that one over there, okay? Now, I also wanna teach you how to give, um, how to give the direction in, the, in, in a proper way. So don't just give the angle. Um, what you can actually do is if you get if you get this answer of 34.26, right? Um, then I want you to look at this and think about this carefully. So we know that this is going to the right. So that's, now some teachers do this differently. Some teachers use north, south, east, and west. Some teachers say positive x-axis, negative x-axis. So please bear with me um, and, and, and just try to use your own like, rem like try to remember what your teacher did. So I'm gonna call this, because it's going to the right, I'm gonna call it the positive x-axis, okay? Because we know with the x and y, uh, x is on the horizontal, and if you go right, it's positive x-axis. And then, okay, so then what I want us to do is, did we go above the positive x-axis, or did we go below the positive x-axis? Well, we went, um, sorry, we went above right? Because that's why this arrow is going upwards. So what we can say is you can say um, above the positive x-axis. For those of you who maybe have teachers who prefer using east, south, north, west, and all of that, then you could say that this is the east line and we went above that. So you could say north of east. Okay, but now what about the learners who didn't get 34.26, but they rather got 55.74? Well, you guys also, there's also something we can say for you guys. So for you guys, instead of your, your triangle going 
right and then up like what I had what your triangle looks like is it first goes up then goes to the right and so you guys would have calculated this angle and you would have calculated it as 55.74 so let me just do the results in red okay so that's the result okay so what you guys could say is you could say 55.74 then we're moving relative to this line, right? Because that line is going up and we moving, we moving, um, whoopsie. We are moving um, to the right of that line. So you could say um, right of the positive y axis. Because this is the y-axis and it's the positive one. If it was going down, then it's the negative y-axis. If you have a teacher who uses north, south, east, and west, you could say um, east of north. What that means is you're going east, which means to the right, of the north axis, which is the axis that goes up. Okay, so I hope that that helps and I hope that I've answered everyone's questions on how to answer um, that part over there.